Ooh, do you like the new surround sound? It's a Bose L1 compact system to go with our the rest of our AV stuff for use with the massive widescreen TV on the chimney breast. Well, that's enough about that. Hello everyone, let's turn the camera around. Hello everyone, Ashley Riggs here from Stomp Productions. I've had a lot of people ask me about the light, um, speaker stands that I made. Um, the ones that don't have any legs, they have a flat base. And I thought it would be a good idea, rather than explain to everyone individually how I made them, because a lot of people have been asking me, um, I thought I'd put this little video together so that you can see for yourself exactly how I did it. And um, then hopefully you can go away and make your own and stop pestering me to make them for you, because I don't have time, unfortunately, to make them for you as much as I'd love to. I'd like to make some more for myself, but I don't have time to do that. So let's have a quick look at the actual stand. I've got it set up here. This is my living room, by the way. Have a look around the living room. There you go. Very nice too. There we are. Okay, and back to me. All right, let's go down to the uh, to the stand and have a look. So here we are. Here's the stand. And as you can see, it's got a flat base and essentially a speaker pole in it. This isn't the speaker pole I actually use for my light uh, for my speakers. This is just one that I've brought out for demonstration. So first off, let's have a little look at the actual stand itself. I'll just put this pole down out of the way and try not to kill the dog with it. Right, so what we have here is a flat stand. Um, it's a flat piece of metal. It's about oh, four millimeters thick, I'd say. And the dimensions of it are down this edge here, 450 mil to there. 450 mil to there, so it's 450 mil square. And what I've done is in the center, I've bolted a um, internal top hat, a metal one. Now the thing is with top hats is that usually the edge. If I tip this up and try and show you, usually the edge of this on this point here is um, bent over, bent in. So that because the pole normally goes in from the opposite end, the pole normally goes in this direction, not this direction, how I'm doing it. So I've had to cut off the top of this so that a pole can slot in this way and go in this way. So this is an ex a metal external 35mm um, top hat that I've bolted through, you can see the bolts there, it's got a bit of paint damage on the bottom where I stack the two plates next to each other but it's on the underside so nobody sees it. So I've got some bolts going through there and it's just literally centralised on the uh, entire plate. So it's easy enough to centralise it because I just drew a diagonal line from there to there and the same on the opposite corner from this corner to that corner and then centred the middle of the top hat and the centre of the plate uh, drew the, marked out the holes for the bolts, nut and bolted it right the way through. Right, the other couple of things you might have noticed, I don't know if you've seen them already or not, is I have some rubber feet in the corners, and there's one of the rubber feet there, and uh, another one there, and they're just riveted on through the top. You want some metal feet, really, just to lift it off the floor a bit, because if you get an uneven floor surface, it will make the whole thing, the whole thing will rock like this and you don't want it to be rocking too much. These these little feet, these little rubber feet come from Maplin. They're probably about 10 mil thick I'd say. If you're going to make your own one of these I would advise you, you get slightly thicker rubber feet, something a little bit deeper, maybe 15 mil, maybe even 20 because sometimes I do get problems where the bolts on the bottom that poke through um, are actually hitting the floor if the floor's uneven and uh, and it does get a little bit of a rock going on on it so it could do with something a little bit thicker there. Right, the other thing I've added, as you might notice, is this strap. This is just a piece of strapping that um, I bought from Halfords. It's usually used uh, with a ratchet to keep things on a car and so I bought the strap and cut it to length and I've riveted that through the metal work as well. As you can see, I've put some washers there with the rivets so that they hold it so I just made a small hole with a screwdriver through the strapping it's quite tight strapping it's a little bit like seat belt material so it's very very strong and uh, and that of course makes it very easy for carrying I can lift the whole thing I can lift two of them quite easily they're not too heavy the plates although they do have 
some weight to them obviously because they need to be reasonably stable so there we are that's the metal plate that I use and of course all I do then is with a speaker pole which you can buy on the internet uh, quite reasonably cheaply I think I paid £14 for two four foot ones like that and that goes in the centre and then you can put your speaker on the very top and what I tend to do is so to prevent it being a trip hazard oops, I tuck the strap underneath like that when it's in use and it just stands there and uh, it's fairly stable I haven't had any problems with it or anybody knocking it over or anything like that even with you know with the speaker on it which is quite weighty it still takes quite a bit of push I'm trying to push that up now to demonstrate here and it still takes quite a bit of push to push that over uh, where tripod speaker stands may have a wider um, spread a wider footprint um, they don't have the weight that this has so their stability although they've got a bigger footprint I don't think is any better than what, I, than what I've made here but what I do know is that what I've made is um, very pop seems to be very popular with you guys and um, I drew the inspiration from a surround sound speaker system uh, which I don't have anymore and essentially I just made a much larger version of it and I was thinking about perhaps making these things you know, commercially available, um, which would be really nice. So if you're watching this and you make stuff out of metal, maybe you'd like to contact me, info at ashleyriggs.co.uk. If you do get these, um, this is metal plate, by the way. I went to a local metal engineering shop and um, asked them just to cut me this plate. I think it cost about £18 for each one. And I asked them to take off the sharp edges here because when they cut it in the guillotine, it can have a sharp edge. If you did, if you did this for yourself, I'd also um, recommend that you have a radius put on these corners here so it doesn't have a sharp corner. This doesn't have a radius, but when I make my new ones, I'm going to ask the engineering shop just to put a radius there so it doesn't have a sharp corner. Okay, right, that's it. That's the legless speaker stand as I made it. And uh, as you can see, it's very, very simple to make. And uh, if you want to make your own, um, that's how to do it. And um, I hope you uh, hope you do manage to get around doing it, because I think they look much smarter than the tripod ones. I hate the wigwam things. Oops, excuse the dog. There goes the dog. See? Say hello, Dougal. No, nope, he's off. And um, so, uh, and that's the dog's toys in the background, by the way, not mine. So, uh, yeah, if you do want to make your own, uh, good luck to you. If you've got any questions, do ask me. Uh, my email address is info at ashleyriggs.co.uk. That's A-S-H-L-E-Y-R-I-W-S.co.uk. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye.